This is the ethical scenario series where I'll be going through a couple of ethical scenarios um, and how to answer them in your pharmacy, medical or dental school interviews. Okay, so yeah, make sure you turn your post notice on so that you're notified whenever anything new goes on. So today's question is, um, you're a pharmacist or a dentist or a medical doctor. A 14 year old girl who you have known as a patient for the last five years um, has asked you that she needs to tell you something. But before she tells you, she's asked you to promise that you won't tell anyone else. So what do you do? How do you approach this? Again, I always say this. Whenever you ask these ethical scenario questions at interview, take some time to yourself. Think before you start speaking, okay? Contrary to what you might think, I don't think they're there to catch you out. I think interviewers ask you these questions so they can see how you think. Unless you say something completely ridiculous, like unless you say something completely weird, I don't think you should be too far wrong, wrong with these ethical scenarios. Like, don't say something ridiculous, like immoral or illegal or unethical, then you should be fine. All they're trying to see is how you think, is that you can consider the nuances surrounding a scenario and think about how to approach it. Ethical scenarios are very subjective, well, they can be very subjective. If you pick three doctors and ask them the same ethical scenario, you might get three answers that are quite similar but different in their approach and that's completely fine because as humans we are subjective like we do things differently sometimes we approach things differently and that's fine and so that goes back to my point of saying they're not trying to catch you out with these questions they just want to see how you think and how you approach scenarios and how you would you would act in a scenario like this because as a medical doctor or as a dentist or as a pharmacist you'll have loads of ethical scenarios to attend to and they just want to see how you would approach it if you were in that scenario so don't i know they can be scary these ethical scenarios can be scary because it can be anything but don't be too scared of them. The main thing here is that the child is a minor. Well, the child is a minor. That's a bit of a tautology because the child, <laughs> every child is a minor. So yeah, the main thing here is that the patient is a minor, okay? You need to be careful with what you promise to say before they've even told you what it is. Even if they were not a minor, you still need to, because we have um, safeguarding for adults. We still do adult safeguarding. So you should never really promise to withhold information or to not share information unless you know what it is. Okay. You can start off by saying that because I don't know what it is and because it's the patient is a minor, it might be something that will raise safeguarding issues. So I'm going to make sure that I don't promise to withhold this information until I know what it is. They could tell you something that someone has done to them or something that needs you to raise alarms as their dentist, as their pharmacist, as their doctor, okay? Let the child know I'm here to guard you actually. I'm here as your dentist to make sure that you're okay. So unless I know what it is that you're going to tell me, I'm sorry, but I can't make any promises not to share the information. Obviously, in a gentle way, in a kind of way, not in a way that, th that you make them feel like you're chastising them, okay? Because then they won't be encouraged to tell you anything if you just tell them in a scary way oh no i'm gonna have to tell your, your parents i'm gonna have to call the police if you tell me anything bad obviously they're not gonna tell you anything so just make sure that you're being sensitive with this with your approach that you approach it in a sensitive way but let them know that for their own good you might have to raise concerns if it's something that puts them in danger okay Say it in a sensitive way, say it with tact, okay? Not just brutal honesty. Let them know that if it's something that's putting them in harm, then you will like to help them and talk to people that can um, make sure that they're safe, okay? Make them feel safe in that, in that space. Make them feel safe before they even tell you anything because in that moment, they'll be much more inclined to tell you anything if they feel safe with you. If or when the patient then tells you what it is and it's something that you feel like needs um, raising concern, make sure that you only raise concerns with people who absolutely have have to know okay don't tell people who don't who don't have to be privy to this information if it's a safeguarding issue contact your safeguarding and um, lead in your practice because then you're doing the right thing by raising concern and safeguarding the patient 
without giving more detail or more information than you need to give. And it's also important to say to the interviewers that you understand that your duty of confidentiality is not absolute. So what this means is that yes, you're supposed to be confidential with information that patients tell you, but if a patient tells you anything that puts their lives or puts their safety at risk, then confidentiality can be breached in that instance. There are cases where you might need to breach confidentiality in order to do good to your patients, in order to do no harm to your patients. You will have to talk to other people about whatever it is that they have told you. So just reiterate this to the interviewer so that they know that you understand that you need to exercise confidentiality with your patients. However, you also understand simultaneously that there are instances where this confidentiality duty will have to be breached in order to protect your patient. And then again, as usual, if you've watched the series, you know where I'm going. Always, always, as much as you can, try to include the four pillars of medical ethics. So autonomy, justice, beneficent, non-maleficence. So autonomy, they have the power to make their lifestyle choices. They have the choice to accept or reject treatments that we offer. Um, justice, make sure that everyone is being treated in an equitable way, benevolence to do good to patients and non-maleficence to do no harm. So I feel like in every ethical scenario there's always a place for one of these medical ethics, for at least one of these medical ethics. So always think about the scenario and think about what ethics you can talk about. In this scenario as a 14 year old um, child, you don't know what they're going to tell you. It might be something that's putting their life to harm. So you could say that one of, as a dentist, as a pharmacist, as a doctor, one of your duties is so to do good to your patients. And if they tell you something that's putting their lives at risk, then um, breaching confidentiality is a way of upholding one of the medical ethics. So yeah, basically this is how I think you could approach this question again. That's the same, the same strategy you're using here. You're exploring all of the different factors and all of the nuances and finally how you would approach it. So again, like I said, unless you say something completely weird, you should be okay. Don't be too scared um, about these ethical scenarios. They're not there to trip you up. They're not there to set you up for failure. Um, so yeah, just take some time, a few seconds, think about the question, um, posture yourself before you start speaking. And it's more than okay for you to be stuck on questions. Just Take some time again, regroup, refocus, and start speaking again. They won't be bothered, they won't be mad at you for getting stuck. So don't worry about that, don't be too scared about getting stuck. Um, but just make sure that you have a good plan of what you're going to say before you start speaking, because then there's less chances of you getting stuck multiple times whilst trying to answer the same question. Okay, so I hope this is useful. I hope that it makes a bit more sense. As always, good luck and get in. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm always more than happy to answer them. And I'll see you in the next one.